Beautiful song. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, Craig is correct. We are talking this month of May for the entire month about consciousness. It's all about consciousness. And um, hmm. so we're going to spend this entire month exploring this idea of what is consciousness? Where are we in it? Is it in us? Can we grow it? Can we expand it? We're always hearing that, right? Expand your consciousness. Expand your awareness. Can we do that? So we're going to be looking over the next few weeks at this idea of consciousness and exactly what it is. In the Science of Mind, in our textbook that we use, our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, says of consciousness in the definitions, he says, mental awareness. That's the first thing that he says in there is mental awareness. And then he goes on to talk about the subjective and the objective and all those, those other pieces and parts that, that he teaches. But those first two words, mental awareness, seem to resonate with me about what this idea of consciousness actually is. Other sources that I look at say that it is awareness or perception of something or that it's awareness by the mind of itself and the world. So it's, it's how we view ourselves in and of and as, as the world and our awareness of it. So you can see I'm kind of stumbling all over everything here, right? What is consciousness? What is this stuff? What is this thing that we call this? Now, many of you may know I have my master's degree in consciousness studies from the Holmes Institute of Spiritual Leadership. That, with a $5 bill, would get you a vanilla latte at stop Starbucks. Okay? Six or seven. Six or seven. Well, a little one. A little one. Okay, it's a little one. So, and what I did learn at the Holmes Institute about consciousness in this exploration over this three and a half year period was that it's still up for grabs. Because there's so many different ways and perspectives to look at it. We have the theological and the religious perspective of consciousness. We have the medical. Are they conscious or unconscious? Are they in a coma or awake? We have the medical perspective. And then we have the philosophical and the cosmic consciousness. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And this month, we're just going to look at it. And you get to decide what you think about it. But we're going to explore some fun things and maybe give you some other things to think about and chew on. Okay? So we all have this idea of consciousness. We all have an awareness, let's say, of the color red. Now, if we all bring to mind the color red, and it's funny because I'm seeing red on this side and none on this side, but uh, if we all have color red, but we have our, in our own mind different shades, perhaps, of that, a different perspective of that, different meaning of what that means. What about chocolate? I know some of us don't like chocolate, but we still have a concept of it, right? To know we don't like it, or we do like it, but it's all different. It's all different because we're each individualized unique. We also all have a concept of water. I personally happen to like my um, swimming pool water like a bathtub. I like it a little bit warmer. Those polar bear people, I don't understand them. They want to get it, you know, I just don't get that in the ice water thing. But we all have a different consciousness, a different perspective, a different awareness of what water is and feels like to us. So our talk today is what are you looking at? What are you looking at? And this is based on the idea of what we focus on expands in our life. And I don't mean it grows size-wise, but the awareness of it expands for us. And those that were in the Pam Grout work last summer, E squared, we actually did some experiments around this with the automobiles. Remember, we were, had to look for, a, be aware of, look for a potential, I mean, a specific type of car. And we saw that being played out in our, in our world. We've probably all had that experience as well when we purchase a new vehicle or decide to purchase a new vehicle thinking we've got this perfect, unique automobile. And then what happens? We see it everywhere, don't we? even down to the special order wheels that we thought we were getting one of a kind of, right? Yeah, we see it everywhere. And science tells us that part of this process is this thing in the brain stem called the reticular activator. And that the reticular activator is activated when our mind tells us that something is important. Something's important. 
and we begin to pay attention to it, then this part of our brain and our awareness begins to go, oh, that's important. I need to see more of that. I need to see more of that. And we begin to see more. And that's a little bit about how this process of gratitude in advance works. Same type of theory is in action there. So we hear about this from science and um, you know, through our own experiments, through our own experience in life. So can we agree this morning that what we focus on has a tendency to expand in our awareness? Can we start there? Do we, do we have kind of general consensus agreement on that? Okay. So, so starting with that platform, how can we use this? How can we use this? Because I'm all about application, right? This stuff's not practical. Don't need to be here, but we make it practical. So how we use it is by focusing on those ideas, beliefs, concepts, and conditions that we desire to see more of in our life and simply turning away from the ones we don't want to see. Easy breezy, right? Yeah, easy breezy. Not so much so sometimes. Not so much so. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, tells us, Never look at that which you do not wish to experience. That's kind of hard to take, isn't it? <laughs> what? No matter what the false condition may be, it must be refuted, denied, proven wrong. That's in the Science of Mind, page 186. Never look at that which you do not wish to experience. It sounds pretty simple, and it can be, but getting started can be a little bit of a challenge for us to begin to change those beliefs and conversations thoughts ideas the words that we say it can be a little difficult to get that kind of going in the right direction can it and this is also one of the most misunderstood principles in the science of mind because we've been accused of they don't look at anything they bury their head in the sand they're just not realist but that's not what we're saying is it that's not what we're saying. We're saying don't dwell on those things that we don't wish to see more of. Don't dwell on them. An example would be, of course, our news media. Our news media, either in print or television, internet, whatever your source may be. Many of us don't watch the news. And that's, that's a choice and that's fine, but this principle is not saying that. This principle is, is saying don't dwell on those stories. Awareness, being aware of what's happening on our planet, what's happening in our world, gives us the opportunity to focus our prayer work in those areas. To recognize there's war here, I know peace. There's famine and hunger here, I know source and resources. If there is um, unrest in this place, I might know more peace there as well, right? So we can, we can focus on those positive qualities that we want to see in those areas rather than dwelling on being aggravated by, frustrated by, and telling that story of the war, the damage, the destruction, the famine. We focus on what we want to see more of. We want to see more love, more peace. Have you ever heard little kids? Look at this scar I got. I was playing baseball. Got hit by the ball. I got a scar. Oh, that's nothing. You should see the one I got when I fell off my bike. Yeah. You ever heard kids do that? Have you ever been at a dinner party with adults? And the conversation turns to medicine, medical procedures, doctors, ailments. And it becomes a feeding frenzy. It becomes this idea of one-upsmanship. Oh, yeah, I had that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had that. Well, what about my surgery there? Oh, I'm taking these. I'm taking those. I took those. My doctor said. Have you ever been in one of those conversations where everybody at the table then starts to talk about their ailments? Have you been in there? My favorite is, oh, my back hurts. Yeah, my back hurt too. You know, it turned out to be my sciatic. Oh yeah, I had sciatic. It went up in my shoulder. Oh yeah, I had that too. But it went in my neck. Yeah, it went in my neck. And then I went to the chiropractor. Well, you know, I went to the chiropractor, but I had to go to the acupuncturist. And then after the acu... Man, I ended up with surgery. And then there's somebody at the table that pulls out a neck brace and goes, yeah, I had to go have surgery. 
Now, I am not making fun of any of that. I'm having fun with it because it's what we do. It's what we do. I've done it. We've all been caught up in it, haven't we? We've all been caught up in it. We've all been caught up in it. How can we handle that differently? How can we handle that differently? My feet are in such great shape. They support me and carry me. My knee doesn't, my knee is, is so good and so flexible. My shoulders feel so strong. My smile is so happy. My face is so happy to smile. Silliness, right? What is she talking about? But these are ways that we can focus on things that actually work in our body as opposed to things that bring us pain because when we talk about, oh, my aching back, what do we get? Oh, my aching back. Oh, my aching back. So we don't want to focus on those things. Not that we ignore them. Not that we lie about it if somebody says, how's your back? You know, it's getting better. It's getting better. Because that's focusing on the fact that it is getting better because we know how to heal from within and we can focus on it's getting better. Better and better every day. How you doing? Better and better every day. Better and better every day. So we talk about... <laughs> our own thoughts. Now this has been my own experience of late and we'll get into that in a moment, but listening to our own thoughts, driving down the road. Why did he cut me off? Can't people learn to drive? Where'd they get their license? J.C. Penny, what is going on? <laughs> Anybody have this? Am I the only one? <laughs> Hello? I, oh, thanks, Suzanne. I'm the only one. But we have this chatter, right? How could we change that around? We're in the grocery store. These checkers are the slowest people on the planet. I'm never going to get out of here. Why don't they hire people that can bag groceries? Did you see that? They just put the bread on the bottom and the eggs on top. Oh, my gosh. Okay, anybody else have that chatter? Sure we do. Is there another story? Is there another story that we can tell ourselves that's more positive, that can ignite in us compassion or kindness? What if that checker, who's so slow and distracted, has a sick child at home, had to come to work today to be able to pay for the medical bills and the care for that child, and is a little distracted, a little worried mom. Can we shift the perspective? Can we go into compassion? Can we open our hearts? Can we have a more positive experience there? Sure we can. Sure we can. So is, is it possible for us to use this thing called consciousness, this awareness that we have, the power of our minds to create a positive, prosperous, and joyous life? I love that phraseology. Positive, prosperous, and joy, joyous life. I don't know. Let's see. If we go back to our original prince. Prin principle, process, premise that we agreed on, what we focus on expands. Does it make sense? Would it be logical to say what I focus on expands, what I take my focus off of diminishes? Does that make sense? Yeah. Because we're not feeding it any energy any longer, so it diminishes in our life. So if we want love, abundance, and wellness... We're going to focus on love, abundance, and wellness. We're not going to focus on separation and fear. We're not going to focus on illness and disease. We're not going to focus on lack. Does that make sense? And then those things begin to diminish in our life and don't show up in our face all the time and in our life and in our experience. And we begin to see more of the wellness, the love, and the prosperity. So it's a simple idea to think and to talk about what you want more of. Yes? Simple. <laughs> want some tips? <laughs> I know I do, and many of these I've been experiencing because of things in my life. But um, <clears throat> the first one, number one. Remember, we talked about this a few weeks ago, and I have continued to use it in powerful ways in my life. It's from Alan Cohen, and it says, Please let me be wrong in my assumption about whatever it is. Fill in the blank. Please let me be wrong about this cashier. Please let me be wrong about this bagger. Please let me be wrong about that driver that just cut me off. 
or whatever story, story that we're making up about something that we don't really know. It's that idea of making up a better story. But please let me be wrong about this assumption. And then the follow-up question to that that makes it even more powerful is, what's another possibility here? Because when we ask that question of this universal mind, this field of infinite possibilities, when we say, what's another possibility? Don't we get flooded with those? We get those answers. We get those other possibilities that can come forward to us and just pop into our head. Oh, it could be this. Oh, it could be that. Something more affirmative that we can then make up a better story about. Make up a better story about. Number two, if you want wellness, talk and think about all the things that are going well or working in and through your body. Instead of telling your friends about the pains and the aches and this and that and the other, tell them about what's working. Tell them about what's working. It'll be more uplifting for them and for you. So tell them about what's working. And not that my back doesn't hurt today isn't that good because that's still kind of negative, right? <laughs> my back feels great. My back feels good. My back feels better. My back is getting better. You know, come at it wherever you are, but start someplace and then continue to grow in that consciousness of the good. Number three, when you do happen to notice negative qualities or judging or criticizing of people, events, or circumstances or situations, immediately say to yourself, stop it. Stop it. Now, I, many of you know that I have had a moving experience for the first four months of this year. And I will update you that I am in. All of my things have been collected from all over the valley, and they're all in one spot now. And um, I have live in a box farm. I can barely see over many of them. I can get my car in if I drive really straight and hug the garage wall. Um, it's getting there. It's getting there. But what a process this has been for me. It has been four months. And it, was, it started with spirit kind of prompting me in November to think about selling my house and getting into something smaller that would be less maintenance for me and allow me to spend more time with you guys. And um, so we listed the house in January, and then it took a lot to get it ready to sell, of course. And then, you know, when you list a house, you get to live in a model home. Because the realtor wants the lights on, the music on, the bed made, the sinks wiped down, um, what else? Dust bunny's gone, yeah. Um, cookies baking, you know, all that stuff you gotta do. So it was like an hour to get out the door in the mornings, and that was fun. And then the buyers showed up, and then I have to deal with them, and then the move, and the movers, and the moving. And then I found a house, but then I canceled a house, and then I had to find another house. And then I'm dealing with sellers, and title, and escrow, and lenders. And then the move came, and there was a time gap and I got to be homeless for 14 days and I was adopted by a beautiful friend of mine who took me in and spoiled me rotten for 14 days. It's perfect. And now I'm in. And you guys, the calls and the notes and the can I help and what can we do for you and you've all been amazing and I just wanted to publicly say thank you very much for all of your kindness, all of your support and all of your love through these four crazy months and as soon as I get it set up, we'll have a party at my house. So. I'll let you know the date. But throughout this process, I have had my moments. Because this is one of the top four things, right? What is it? A, a death, a marriage, a job change, and moving. Those are like the top four things that kind of bring craziness into our life. But I thought I was above that. I'm a minister. I'm, I've got big consciousness, right? No. No, no, no. So I have had my opportunities, but through that, I've been able to use many of these tools. And this one, recently with this idea of stop it, is when I get going with those thoughts and making up my stories that are not empowering. And my idea is saying, stop it. You're creating right now. Because your thoughts are creative. The energy back of these thoughts, the anger, the frustration, the angst, whatever it might be, even the melancholy around selling my house of my years and all of that. Stop it. Make up a better thought. What do you want more of? Do you want more of that which you're complaining about, whining about? Or do you want more 
of something else. Stop that. Create new. Put into law. Plant the seed of what it is that you want more of. So I have gotten to use that process a lot lately, and it's been very powerful in my life, and I, I recommend it for you. And many of you may know this, I stole it, from Bob Newhart. If you've ever seen that clip of his where he has the client that comes in and that keeps laughing, Reverend Glenn and Reverend Catherine and I got together this week and we were laughing about this. I was telling him this story and we were belly laughing I and mean, we were doubled over in our chairs just thinking about this clip. If you've not seen it, Google Bob Newhart, just stop it. It's on YouTube. It's hysterical. So I invite you to join me in that process. Number four is gratitude. Start thinking about all of the good in your life. I mean, really, we've got so much good in our life. We live in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have beautiful weather. We have beautiful friends. We have a beautiful community. We can find so, so many things to be grateful for in our life. Start focusing on those. We know this power of gratitude from all the gratitude work that we've done over the past months. It is a spiritual practice. It is powerful. So step into that. And I love Kathy Ann Lewis's line of look for the good and praise it because it just gives you more to praise. It just gives you more to praise. Number five, the bills are piling up. The bills are piling up. There's not enough cash in the bank to take care of the bills that are showing up. There's some things we can do there rather than same thing, complaining about that and calling our sister or our friends or brother or whatever and complaining about that. Find something good about your finances. I went to the grocery today and found the most beautiful apples. I went to the grocery today and I was able to put together this beautiful dinner for my family tonight. Find something, something to praise in that. When you're paying your bills, we've all probably heard the one where you write thank you on that. But I invite you to also on your memo line, besides saying thank you, think about the people you're keeping employed and the families you're supporting by paying your bill on time. You know, if it's APS, they're a big company, but there's a lot of people that work there. A lot of people, a lot of families. And our pain, our bills supports that, and we're keeping our economy rich and flowing. And in that gratitude, then, comes that circulation back to us. Number six, if you hate your job, stop telling everyone the grueling misery of it and start talking about what you love to do. Anybody ever done that? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> sure we have. So what can we do instead? Instead of focusing on and complaining about the boss or the employees or whatever it might be or the job duties, focus on that piece of it that you do like. I did my rampage of gratitude a few weeks ago about the computer and the fast internet and the copier and the phones and the people I get to hook up with and the service I get to be of pe to people, right? We can always find something in there that we can focus on the positive as opposed to the negative piece of it. And that's, the, that's what I'm encouraging us to do with all of these tools. This morning, my friend, Dr. Jim Lockhart, Reverend Dr. Jim Lockhart, posted a slide, on, a meme on Facebook that I thought was perfect for us today. And he says, was it a bad day or was it bad five minutes that you milked all day? <laughs> I mean, isn't that what we do? I mean, we focus on that one little snippet of conversation and we tell it over and over and over and over. And so, exactly, stop it. Stop it. Make up a better story. Make up a better story. So we all have this power within us to know this greater awareness. We all have it. We were born with it. We were born with it. So I want to move us to conclusion this morning and don't show the slide yet slides later that <laughs> we have a new writer a new author that writes for our science of mind magazine his name's Mitch Horowitz and he's the vice president and executive editor of Tarcher publisher which publishes our science of mind text and many of our um, new thought authors and stuff and he writes a column called positivity positivity and in November he was writing about William James and William James said of new thought that new thought is a religion or a faith based in healthy mindedness isn't that wonderful when people say what do you what do you study science of mind what is that it's a faith tradition based in healthy mindedness it rolls off the tongue doesn't it I like that 
So Mitch wrote this article about an experiment from 1931 that a prominent scientist of the day did, and it was based on William James' suggestion of people, that people should direct their attention to what is good and useful and ignore the rest. Well, the scientist goes, that sounds like bunk. That's a 1930s word, right? Bunk. Sounds like bunk. But um, my life's on the rocks. It's not working. What have I got to lose? Well, he lost a lot. He lost a lot. He, his internal losses included giving up negativity, unhappiness, feelings of ineffectiveness and, and obscurity. He was feeling very obscure and invisible in his life. He let go of feeling that life was intolerable. And outwardly, business relationships changed for him. And they became productive. And he started receiving phone calls out of the blue of people that he'd been wanting to work with and communicate with. And they, the other people seeking his assistance and his colleagues became cooperative. Became cooperative. His life began to transform during this 30-day trial and it began to work. So he continued with the process and then he felt engaged in living again. He was transformed by transforming his thinking by directing his attention to what is good and useful and ignoring the rest. Ernest Holmes, our founder, in this little book that he wrote, this is called Can We Talk to God? In it he says, we can only come into the experience of harmony by thinking harmoniously. So no matter what we profess, what the lips say, it is only from the mind and the heart that the experiences of life come. So to begin to constructively use the law of mind rests on the conversion of our consciousness. Our life on the outer is a reflection of the inner. Isn't that a powerful quote? I like that one. So as we wrap up this morning, I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward and they're going to have a little gift for you this morning. This is, we're giving, we're giving at this point. We're not collecting, we're giving. <laughs> So I've got a little handout that the ladies are going to hand out to you. Just start handing those out, ladies. And during, I, I, I want to invite us um, this month, an invitation is a month-long invitation to you to join me in this 30-day process. We're at May 1st. It's a wonderful opportunity to step right into it. And Mich Mitch issued this in his article in November the 30-day challenge to participate and do the experiment that the scientists did of directing our attention to what is good and useful and ignoring the rest. So as soon as we get those, Annie, we need one more for Joe, please. Thank you. All right, and what this says is it's, it's the pledge, basically, that the gentleman took. During this time, I resolved to impose definite restrictions on my thoughts. In thinking of the past, I will dwell only on its pleasing incidents. In thinking of the present, I will direct my attention to its desirable elements. In thinking of the future, future I will regard every worthy and possible ambition as within reach. Now, I suggest if those words are a little antiquated and you want them more personal and powerful, write in what you want there. But I highlighted on the slide, Joe, thank you, in red, I resolve to impose definite restrictions on my thoughts. I will dwell only on its pleasing incidents of the past. I will direct my attention to desirable elements of the present and I will regard every worthy possible ambition of the future is within reach. It's possible. It's possible. And then on the bottom, it's I dedicate myself on this first day of May 2016 to focus on all that is nourishing, advancing, and promising for the next 30 days. I have signed mine. I am participating, and I invite you all to join me in this process. And let's prove these principles of the science of mind. We talk about them all the time. We're walking our talk in 2016, and this is a way that we as community can come together practice the principles, prove the principles to ourselves, and then I would love to hear about them. My email address, and if you want to send me your stories, send me what's happening, send me your thoughts, I would love to bear witness to your expansion of consciousness and your awareness of using these principles. 
Now, I've already, already had some opportunities today to uh, practice this. So it's been um, very fun as I was going through my talk this morning. I'm standing in the bathroom of the new house and I'm having this conversation with myself about this. And I look up and I notice where they had done touch-up paint with a different color and a different sheen of paint. And in the middle of my talking about this, it's like, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? They used the wrong... <laughs> Just stop it, right? Just stop it. So there you go. That's how it works. Please join me. Let's pray about this. Take this into prayer. Join me in this as we practice this powerful, powerful truth and the recognition that God is all that there is. There is only one power, only one presence, only one life, and that is the life of God. And all of that life, love, joy, harmony, all of it is here now present in this room, in this very breath. It is present in through and as me and in through and as each one that is here gathered today. For we are united in that one, in that consciousness. We are spirit in form, in expression, as it has its way through us experiencing life as us. So I speak my word for and about each one of us as we step into this awareness, this consciousness of what's possible. As we step into this field of infinite possibilities, opening our hearts and our minds to the receptivity of life through us. As we step into this 30-day challenge to prove these principles in our own life and the outpicturing of life through us. turning away from that which we do not seek more of in our life and turning towards and focusing on the desirable, the prosperous, the positive, the joyous. So in great gratitude and thankfulness, I just simply release this into the action of law, knowing that it is done, accepting that it is already so, it's already done in the mind of God. For as the word is spoken, it is made manifest. We just simply await its arrival and form before us. So I let it go, I let it be, and we know this together by affirming. And so it is. <laughs>